Hey y'all, what's up? This is Chris from Blackstone Cherry, and you're watching The Helix Hour with Eric Broadbent. Hey, this is Vernon Reed from Living Color, and you're watching The Helix Hour. Hey guys, my name is Gemma Jura. I'm the guitar player for Evanescence, and you're watching The Helix Hour. Welcome to The Helix Hour, brought to you in part by Stuart Travel Guitars. See the incredible stowaway travel guitar at stuartguitars.com. Microphones for the Helix Hour are provided by Rode Microphones. Now, let's, let's talk, talk some Helix. Helix. Hey everyone, happy Sunday to you all. Welcome to the Helix Hour Plus. We are live and joining us this afternoon from over in the United Kingdom is Mr. Phil Walker. Let's bring him onto the presentation right now. Phil, how you doing, my friend? How you doing? How's it going? Great. Nice to have you here. And I want to be here. Thank you. Oh, it's a pleasure to have you. And I want to kind of just kind of preface how uh, we come to meet each other by another, uh, you know, a very famous guitar player and become a mutual friend, probably of both of us, is Jennifer mm -hmm. Batten. Jennifer Batten contacted yeah. me a while back and said, Eric, uh, I've got a guest for you. You have to have him on the Helix Hour. And she says, You'll thank me later, kind of thing. And she sent me all your, like <laughs> links to everything. Jennifer was doing a European tour, I guess, either first half of this year or maybe it was, I think it was probably the first half of this year. And she must have caught you somewhere along along the way. And when Jennifer Batten speaks and says, there's a guest you should have, you, you kind of tend to listen with the chops that she has. <laughs> Did you guys kind of cross paths uh, over, overseas there? or? Yeah, kind of. We, we, were, playing, um, we were playing at the time, Guildford, okay. uh, in, in the south of England. And I got an email a few days before that show um, saying, you know, she'd like to come and, you know, is it all right she comes to see the show and what have you. And, and I was thinking... Is this a wind up? <laughs> you know, is, is, is Jennifer Batten wants to come see my show, really? Okay. And uh, yeah, sure enough, she came and uh, we, after the show, we got a chance to have a quick chat and then we uh, we went for dinner. And, and yeah, well, it was supposed to be probably an hour dinner or something. And it was there for about five or six hours talking. Um, so yeah, it was, it was great. Yeah, she's a great person. Isn't really she is. something? She really is. I know. We, we talk so much about stuff outside of music. You know, she kind of become mm -hmm. friends. I've had her on my Friday night shows, and I've had her on the Helix Hour show as well too. So you know, we've we've chatted a lot, and she's just so mm -hmm. so cool. You forget that she's one of these master master shredder guitar players. You know, you just, just oh, a, absolutely yeah, just a down 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 right just great person. We're gonna say hi to a bunch of people over here in the chat in a second before we get warmed up. But also, if there's new people here joining us, just a few things. I'll share a few things with you. If you're new here, please consider subscribing right now. Hit that subscribe button. Hit the bell for all notifications. And I promise to work very hard to keep you as a subscriber. Also, too, throughout the program here, too, the people that watch this show regularly know that we like to tend to share uh, custom presets by our guest. And today we have one especially uh, from you. So thank you very, very much for that. So we'll be providing a download link to that very, very soon as well, too. And we're going to be pausing several times to jump back over to the chat to say hi to the wonderful people that are taking time out of their Sunday afternoons and evenings and mornings, whatever it may be, to spend with us. So that being said, uh, let's jump right into this. Let's go say hi to a bunch of cool people over here in the chat. We've got Joe Hervey here. Uh, Umo, I can't pronounce his name very well, so I'll just call you Umo. He's here. Uh, thank you very much. Matt Krill is here. Frank Rashad from Line 6 is here. Thank you so very, very much, Frank. Polly D is on vacation watching <laughs> watching this. Very, very nice. You should be doing, uh, you can catch the replay on this, but Scott McLean is here. <laughs> Kai Down, Gary Tholander, Polly D, my beautiful butterfly uh, and uh, ladybug show. She's going to be sharing links to your properties all throughout the program in the live chat and also in our description down below. They're there as well, too, so we'll get people uh, to check you out that may have not seen some of your stuff, which is great. Uh, Chad Husky is here, a great, great friend. John Mansfield Guitar is here. Uh, Andrew Bonica from Line 6 is here. Very, very nice. Thank you so much for the support, guys. Uh, John Mansfield says, I love the Power Cap 212 demo. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Old Metal Dude is here. Andreas Aglans is here. Uh, Carlos Santin. It's almost like we're doing a roll call, right? Who's who's attending today? I'm, we're the teachers. Matt Krill. Uh, I scrolled too fast and I lost a few people. Uh, I'm going to see if I can correct that. Uh, Kai Down. Ian Lormer is here. Einar Freeberg is here. Steve Bull. Bob Ayan. Nice to have you all. Coffee lovers here. Jens uh, Mickelman is here. Paulie D. I think I might have mentioned that. I'm just going to scroll back and see if uh, I've 
I don't think I missed anybody else, so I will I'll go on the record and say I don't think I did. So before we jump into talking about all this, the big thing today about the the touring act that you work with and things like that, I like to kind of mm-hmm. warm up here. We'll take a couple warm up questions and get you know get both of us up to speed and our audience up to speed with you as well too. Can you share with us when you got into guitar and maybe share a little bit of your musical background with us? Yeah, yeah. It, it was well really early for me. I was six years old. Wow. And my dad was yeah, you're quite young. My my dad was a guitar player uh, in the in the sixties and he uh, he had a long break, he got married, um obviously met my mum, um and then it was when I was about six years old, decided he was gonna start playing guitar again. And I used to listen to uh, all the shadows and Eddie Cochran um, on nice. vinyl back then and uh, I was into guitar anyway before I knew, you know, I knew a guitar was going to come into the house. And as soon as one came into the house, I just kind of but That was... I lost a little tiny bit of your Skype feed there. Um, is it possibly... Are you still there? We might have lost Phil uh, briefly there. We'll see if we can get him back. Are you still there, Phil? Um, I can hear you fine. Okay, yeah, good. I can hear you fine. We, lo- we lost you just for a second. So just back up just a tiny bit, even if you repeat <laughs> yourself. Sorry, we just had a bit of a pause in the feed there. Okay, no worries. Yeah, yeah. like I said, I was six years old when I first got my guitar. and My dad brought one into the house and I took it off him and never <laughs> gave him it back. Um, and then just studied and studied by myself uh, till I was about 11 and then went on and did my first gig so 11 years old terrified on a stage (laughs) and I've been there ever since really I've been on the road since um, yeah the 80s (laughs) how did you shake those cobwebs at 11 years old and and, you know because that's a terrifying thing a very terrifying I saw my my son he would be 12 when he did his first Mm -hmm. gig at his school playing with a helix and a very axe at a big dance and he was scared and I was watching him and I I was even scared for him as well but what did you do to shake those nerves Uh, I started drinking early Uh, (laughs) no I didn't I, 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 my, my parents were so supportive. Um, they, they always have been, you know, they always will be, but they, you know, they gave me so much encouragement and, you know, you can do this type thing. And yeah, and th- that was kind of all I needed, um, you know, loads of encouragement. Um, and, and it was actually this guitar uh, that I did my first gig with and um, many years later, I'm still using it. <laughs> That's fantastic. That's, I would I would give to have, give anything to have the original guitars I I first started on. But to be honest with you, they were garbage. You know, because like a lot of parents, <laughs> you know, a lot of you know, like my parents weren't musical, so they didn't have anything to hand me down, anything like that. And they were almost like yard sale guitars with strings like about this high off the uh, off the neck. You know, just very very uncomfortable. But I would love to have it just as a representation of what I started with. But it all comes down to the support at home. And I've had many guests on the show, too, where, you know, their, their parents and moms, like some guests, the whole family's musical, which is cool. But mm. having that musical background is very, very important. And that's one thing I think I feel that we're kind of trying to pass on to Junior here. I have my son is named Eric Junior. And, uh, oh, you know, cool. he, he's becoming a better musician than me at the age of 13. And it's just nice. <laughs> we have studio stuff here for him. And, you know, we never, ever forced it upon him. It's one of the things that we almost didn't want to present music to him. Like it would always be there, of course, but we didn't want to force it. Because as you know, you go back and look at our, our history of, you know, we've played some, I, I know I speak for everybody, we've played some shady clubs, some horrible places, you know, like places where you have to have like three people watch the vehicle to wear your gear while another person is loading in. It's just not, a, it's not all the glamorous lifestyle that everyone thinks it is. And I certainly didn't want to, you know, push that on him. But it's cool when you have the support. It's really, really good grounding, though, is, you know, like you say, you're watching your back. I, I used to carry my guitar with me on my back as I was carrying my amps in and out and things. The guitar nice. never left my side and still doesn't. But, um, yeah, it's it's good grounding. It really is good grounding, you know, especially um, being in the north of England. Um, you know, there's quite some hard audiences there, you know, that used to it used to be hard to entertain a crowd, you know. Um, but, yeah, we did it, got through it, and uh, you got home, and yes, that was another triumph. <laughs> <laughs> well, being being a professional musician up pretty much at the age of 11, that must have helped you as you got maybe like where a lot of us would start and be playing in bands, maybe 16, or very like mid, mid to late teens. By that time, I imagine you're probably almost a seasoned pro at that age, right? 
Yeah, kind of. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I well, the idea was I was going to go to music college when I was around sixteen. Um, never actually did that. I was well, I went for a little while and then figured, no, I, I want to be on the road. You know, I don't want to. I don't want to study music. I want to play music. Um, which has had its ups and downs. Sometimes wish I had have studied music a little more. Um, but you know, I, I, I can't complain. I've I've had a, a great career, played with some great people, and yeah, and some odd people too. So <laughs> I guess you can't complain, right? You certainly can't complain. Exactly. I think a lot exactly. of us, a lot of us, uh, you know, talk about that too. We're thinking like, oh, I wish I would have studied theory more. I, I studied theory quite heavily as a young child, and then all of a sudden, my where my age range is right now, I come in as I was going through theory. And all of a sudden, tablature come out, and I think that kind of ruined me. But at the same time, maybe didn't ruin me either because it let me kind of learn a little bit faster. And then I also developed my own thing a little faster too. So it's kind of a double-edged sword. You can you can say you regret it, but at the same time too, you know, I I also like players that you know. There's some players out there that are the the mathematicians on guitar, you know, that just like mm. it's almost like an an algebra, uh, you know, like some kind of a crazy formula by the time they finish their passage. And there's other people yeah. that just can jam like uh, by the seat of their pants. And I tend to, it's no disrespect to the mathematicians of the world, but I really mm. respect those that can, you know, okay, uh, okay, fly this helicopter, go, you know, kind of thing and can do it. <laughs> you know, it's kind of, I, yeah. I, obviously I don't recommend someone just hopping in a helicopter and taking off over, you know what I'm saying? But it's, <laughs> it's one of those things where, you know, I like the improv. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. It, it's, yeah, it's one of those things with me. I, I, I never, I don't know if it's whether the patience or whatever to, to study music and I don't know. I, I just wanted to, I just want to get out there and do it, you know, and, and, and if it meant learning things by memory. Um, and I know I, I, yeah, I studied classical guitar uh, for a little while mm -hmm. and as I started doing my grades and what have you, and I got to the point where I weren't doing so good because my guitar teacher realized that, hang on a minute, you're not reading music, you're just memorizing what I'm playing. And right. then the sight reading goes, meow. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's the same thing. We hey, how, you know. <laughs> over, over on my Friday night shows, and we're talking about Van Halen things all the time, too. It's one of those things where, uh, you know, Eddie and Alex used to do the same thing, too. Eddie was learning piano, and his mom would make him, you know, like, you have to learn piano, then you can go do your guitar stuff after your lessons are done. Yeah. But he wasn't uh, he wasn't sight reading either. He would memorize the passages, and and that's all he would do, just so he could get that yeah. done and go play guitar. So, you know, it is what it is, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's I, was, I was thinking, um, was it uh, Lionel Richie? I was watching an audience with Lionel Richie. And he bumped into Stevie Wonder, um, and before he actually met him, he said something like, "He says, man, that guy, you should hear him play." You know, he's in the studio next door or something. It turned out to be Stevie Wonder, and he's like, "He couldn't read music, obviously, you know, but look what he's done." <laughs> <laughs> exactly, I know. We'll say hi to a few other people here. We'll come back for another question here. Uh, Jen says, uh, jumping in from from Germany, loving it already. He says, uh, Polly D, live is better. Forrest Hales here. Good evening from Denver. Glad to be here. Butterfly and Ladybug Show saying hi to some people. Brad Miller is here. Alec Bourne, uh, good evening from Italy. And hello to all. Looking forward to tonight's episode. Uh, Carlos Santon. I'm not sure if I mentioned Carlo. I think I did. Uh, let me see here. Jump down to the words at the bottom. I think I've got just about everybody here. Let's talk about the story of Guitar Heroes. And this, what's really cool about this, I really love this, by the way. Um, and a lot of my, I have a lot of friends and and tribute bands, tribute acts, tribute performances, whatever you want to say. Uh, cover. I don't want to say cover. I want to say tribute. I've even had the opportunity of playing for almost a year in a in a Van Halen tribute. But this is not really. It's not. It's more than a tribute. Okay, and that's what I I want people to kind of get their heads around. Can you tell us a little bit about the evolution? of story of guitar heroes and what it what it is in a nutshell yeah exactly um i i well i, I backpedaled right to the beginning um i came home from a gig um i've been playing with somebody uh, it was about 2 a.m and i came home um had a drink put the tv on and we've got a little little corporation over here called the bbc and they put uh guitar heroes at the bbc on the did a um quite a few episodes of that and I was just sat there watching thinking oh, wouldn't it be great if you could actually see all these heroes in you know in like one one big concert and uh, obviously sadly no no longer with us a lot of them but uh, it started me thinking you know how we can how we can actually do this you know how can we 
not do a lucky likey show. I don't. I'd, I'd look ridiculous in a wig, to be honest. So uh, I wanted to do the sound. You know, get the sound as accurately as um, as I could, um, and, and like the the ambience of it all as well, um, which meant I could buy more guitars, obviously. <laughs> 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 um, uh, yeah, that's kind of how it all started, really. So we we um, we we have the correct guitar for the um, for, for the correct guitar hero. So um, Hank Marvin, we have the Fiesta Red Strat um, slash we use the Les Paul, um, and and the list goes on and on and on. Um, and we have the support of video screens on stage as well. Um, we've got a fantastic live band. Um, they're all amazing musicians, which I'm sure we'll talk about in a second anyway, uh, in themselves. Uh, so, yeah, it's, it's it, I guess you could call it a live rockumentary. Nice. That's a good way, yeah. Um, but, yeah, we, we kind of avoid the tribute thing. We like to say, probably say pay homage to um, rather than be a tribute band. Cause it, it's not really a tribute band. That's right. It's, um, an, it's an experience, yeah, right? It's, it's almost just, like there's a... quite a lot of. Yeah. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And of course, the the video screens that we have up um, as well makes makes a big difference to uh, the, you know to the show. We've got um, actual footage of some of the guitar heroes that we uh, pay homage to. Um, some interesting things that maybe some people wouldn't know about the guitar heroes. Um, yeah, we we saw a timeline. We start in the fifties and work our way through. Um, you know, people like Chuck Berry, um, Eddie Cochran, through to Jimi Hendrix. I think I think we counted. I think it's about twenty nine thirty guitar heroes we put in the show. Wow! So it's it's it's, it's a two hour show and it is non stop for two hours. <laughs> no no intermission, no break. We we have a twenty minute break. Okay. Yeah, but we do um, we do an hour, a twenty minute interval, and then another hour. Absolutely fantastic. So I can I'm just picturing right now. I think that's one of the many things that Jennifer Batten probably loved about uh, the act because she is a very visual person. She produces her own mm. video, uh, you know, montages and collages and things going on behind her shows. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, you know, I have I'm sure she has big respect when she sees that. And just like any um, movie that we watch, our favorite movies, you know, the the soundtrack is only is only as I mean, the soundtrack is great. Uh, visuals are great, but you can't have either without. I mean, the you know the best the yeah. best movie take away that soundtrack, and it's not necessarily the best movie anymore. So I can see exactly. maybe some people coming to your shows, uh, and they might know maybe one third of the artists. You know, maybe depending on the age of the people that come to your show, they might know only a certain limited. Uh, you know, uh, repertoire of the music and seeing some of those visuals. Mm. Oh, that's that guy or girl I saw. I, okay, and now I'm connecting, right? And really draws you into yeah. the performance. Absolutely. I mean, we do get a lot of people coming up um, afterwards saying, you know, uh, oh, but I'd never heard of Brad Paisley before. Um, I'm going to go buy his album now. Exactly. You know, we get that a lot. So it's great. That's cool, isn't it, too? Because And the same thing happens here with the show sometimes. I'll have a guest on. Um, like, I know I know you're widely known across the world, but there might be two, three, four, five people today that come in and they don't know about you. And it's a really, really mm. cool feeling when you can pay it forward and, and introduce a new, you know, band or artist or whatever. And you know what it's like, yeah. too, when maybe a friend introduces you to something new. You're like, oh, my God, where mm. have I been all this time? Why did they miss this? It's a really cool feeling. Yeah. Yeah, I yeah, like that a lot. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, I totally agree with that. Yeah. I have a couple yeah. more people in the chat. Jump over here and see. Uh, Grease Monkey Guitars is here. No penalties for being late. That's all good. R2, R3, locking that. One of our moderators and friends is here as well, too. Scott Connors jumping in. Uh, let me see here. Uh, Bam Ozzy is also here. So uh, one of the things that I, f I found but by researching you guys and trying to get in inside uh, you know the nutshell very quickly in a very limited time that I had to, to study on you guys is mm -hmm. that every band member really brings a lot to the table and that you're a very self-sufficient machine. Whereas, I mean, like a lot of times people yeah. hire managers here and they hire video production people here. Tell us a little bit about mm -hmm. how each of your members that have been with you pretty much th through the, uh, you know, the, the inception of the band or the group, uh, tell us what they all do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Losing you. Yeah, we lost video feed. Try. Oh, still there? Yeah, so here. So to go ahead and tell us about what everyone does. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we've. Um, I, I guess you call him my right hand man, uh, Toby James. He's um, he's been in the show since day one. Uh, guitar player. He, well, he actually plays guitar and bass in the show. Um, he's he, yeah, he's, he's like a rock. 
you know, he's 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 great. He's he's there for for every every little decision he's there for as well. He, he uh, he's the one that actually creates all the video screens. Okay. Uh, behind us, he's, he's he's quite a talented young man. Um, we've got uh, like so we've got quite a it's quite a, a small crew really, but the the band um, Lee Williams we've got in the band as well. He plays guitar, bass, um, and as well. And then we've got Al, who uh, plays. I'm, I'm probably not going to give too much away here, but he, he plays the drums and um, a, a ukulele at one point. But that's you'd have to come see the show to see that. I'm not even going to describe that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so cool! <laughs> it, it's just like but, the, yeah, that... <laughs> it's like the team at Line Six. The, a lot of the staff there. We talked about this when I had uh, Joe B on the show last week. Uh, mm-hmm. The president of uh, YGG a lot of the staff there wear multiple hats and you have to these days because if you, you just can't be yeah. self-sufficient and survive if not a lot of people are doing multiple tasks because independent acts can't afford to necessarily go out there and hire all these outboard uh you know outside yeah. people so the more you can do internally is a great thing absolutely yeah absolutely and it's the same going on the road as well as so i think um you know jennifer will agree with me when um, you, you've got to keep things tight you've got to you, you can't have like you know 15 on the road anymore you know 15 road crew you've got a people have got to have multiple jobs i mean we've got a sound guy um we've got a, a lighting guy we've got a guitar tech and they all do multiple things on the road with us as well you know so if the other guitar tech even comes out on stage at one point and plays uh, plays some 12 string with us <laughs> that is so cool well that's a very comfortable feeling too because uh, not everyone has the luxury of touring with their own sound technicians. Lighting is one thing. I mean, I, I, the, the lighting technician will kind of know your set, but I'm sure in, in a pinch, if you had someone else running lights for you, you could probably live with that. But having your sound consistent night after night after night, knowing yeah. when the guitar solos come in, knowing when there's a, you know, a fill from the drummer or blah, 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 all that kind of stuff. It's nice to know that, that comfort zone. You just All you have to do is show up and play, and you know everything yeah. behind the scenes is going to go smoother. That's very cool, and we don't always get that luxury. Well, I mean, to be honest, um, as far as the sound goes, it a lot of it is down to the Helix nice. um, that we use because it, it, all, all the solos are all programmed into the Helix. So you know, it kind of make it probably they probably hate me for saying this, but it does make his job a little easier. I bet, so and there's, there's still a million things he has to do, but this less mm-hmm. uh, less things he has to focus on, and that couldn't be a better segue. Let's talk about this. When was it uh, in the time period, time frame that you discovered Helix, and uh, what what were your first reactions to it? Well, I mean, I've been a Line Six user uh, long before this show, and long before I had any dealings with Line Six. Mm-hmm. Um, I had the very first um, kidney shaped pod, uh, which was a which was a, you know it was, it was a game changer. Was that thing? It really was. Um, but I then, you know, through various different bits of gear, I went on to the HD 500X. And that's what we first started doing this show on. Um, I was, again, I was looking around, but when I first put the show together, I was looking around for things to, you know, something that would do everything, you know, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the Swiss Army pedal board, if you like. Sure. And, and the HD 500X was the closest thing that could do, you know, this show. So... We've had that for about oh, two, two and a half years, I would think. And then we did uh, a guitar show in um, Birmingham uh, in England. Uh, what's it? I think the Northern... Oh, no, the Birmingham Guitar Show. It's okay. So, um, so we, we, we did that, and Yamaha was there. And I've, I've known uh, Paul Heimarsh, who you've had on the show. I've mm-hmm. known Paul for a little while now. And uh, we said to Paul, oh, you've got to get the guys and bring them in to see our set, mm-hmm. you know, doing in the other room so all the guys from Yamaha and Line 6 came in and they they were blown away they they said my god how, 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 you know all these sounds coming out of this HD 500 have you heard of Helix and I went well I've heard of it mm-hmm. yeah 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 I've, I've heard of it and I spoke to uh, Martin Adam um, who's one of the guys at Yamaha uh, a few days later and he said well he said um I tell you what we'll do. We'll send you a Helix and, and see what you make of that. Sure. I was like, oh, okay, yeah, that's that's great. So a few days later, Helix came through, unboxed it, and yeah, it just blew my mind. Uh, absolutely blew my mind. The the 
so easy to use. I mean, the HD 500 was a, an amazing piece of kit, but it's got a, you know the tiny little screen on there. Yeah. And it's it was great. You know, it really was. But it, it was to program a show like ours. It was a difficult thing to do. So the Helix was just so intuitive, and and the sounds that you get out of it. And but yeah, it just it was almost like in fact my uh, my wife as well. She she was listening to it as well when it was in a little studio. And uh, and she said, it's like having an amp in the room, isn't it? That's cool. And it's you know it's like yeah it is it's like having an amp in the room. And we we quickly um, changed everybody on the show. Um, I, I, you know, like I say, I had one. Um, Toby had one. Now uh, Lee um, Williams, who I mentioned, he joined us in January of this year. He's now got one. Um, so we're we're an ampler stage. It's just the helix on there. Much, much more free space, less clutter. I mean, back in the day, the thing was to try to intimidate yeah. with all these big stacks and all kinds of crazy stuff. And I think now mm. it's more what we're all trying to do is try to be more simplistic. And, mm. you know, let, let you have visuals. That's what the visuals are there for. You can watch. If you want to see stuff, you can watch yeah. the visuals. But having the sound, uh, you know, as transparent as possible, that's fantastic. And as, as you know as well, too, like you talked about the first time plugging into it. You can watch all these demos. You can watch anyone on YouTube doing demos. I've done demos. There's a million people doing great demos on them. But whether whether you're looking at the demos or not, you just have to watch the person playing it for the first time, and you watch that little yeah. childish grin come over their face the first time they plug in. That there would probably be the world's best demo. All you need is seven seconds yeah. of that expression, and you got it, right? Exactly, exactly. I think, I, I think there's probably a couple of cuss words that I used when I first heard it. I I'm sure. Like, <laughs> yeah. Well, there's. But it really is like that. It really is like that. You know, we we get we get loads of people because we we always do a meet and greet at the end of our show, mm -hmm. and and it's great to do that because people. I mean, we can only do so many guitar heroes in in one evening. Sure. And it's great to hear what people want next year when we go back to the same venue. So great for doing that. But also people, you know, come and want to talk about gear and equipment and guitars and things like that. And it's amazing how many people say. Oh, why do you why do you put the amplifiers off stage? Why haven't you got them on stage? That's uh, right. Well, we don't have any. <laughs> none whatsoever. None whatsoever. I I can relate but to that. It's a great compliment. I I can remember that back in the day, we were doing the Van Halen tribute thing. The lead singer would get off the stage and would be flocked by girls. You know, just the girls would be all over the singer, and I'd walk off the stage and I'd have like. 10 guys, what are you using there? I mean, this is long before the days of digital as we know it today. Yeah. You know, there's like your Digitex and all that kind of stuff back in the day and various boss units and stuff like that. Obviously some Line 6 stuff too. But it's like all my conversations until it was time to go back on after a set was talking about how I'm running my gear. But it also is cool because people are, you, maybe you're inspiring them in some ways or you know answering yeah. some questions yeah. that, and it's also nice to connect with the fans as well too. So that's pretty cool. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, we get we get people coming, you know, time and time again, and it's it, it, it's great. And in fact, we even have people coming that have, you know, they'll come back and said, "I did it. I went and bought a Helix. I've got to love it." You know, <laughs> it's, you know, so it's nice that we're, you know, that we're doing that as well. And for Line Six, because they're, you know, they're they're really great with us and and Yamaha, um, and you know, to think that we're maybe maybe do something back for those guys as well. You yeah. know. It's, because the the guys that probably come watch our show are, are the people that you know that may that might want to sound like you know David Gilmore, that may want to sound like Eric Clapton, um, and you know they, they can ask they can ask us how you do that, yeah, you know, how do you get that sound, and we can tell them, you know. Well, as I as I mentioned to you off the camera, and I might as well say it now as well too. From the moment that I mentioned that you were coming on the show, the the feedback has been like enormous, enormously positive from that day until right up until today. And one of our viewers here, one of our regulars uh, on the show here, Kai Down, he had said that he had purchased a Helix for the, for, from the very first demo he saw of you doing it. Um, and the the, oh, cool, wow. the cool thing is, it is that nice, warm and fuzzy feeling, um, you know, that we've, you know, we're, we're kind of influential sometimes and in, in having people buy some of this gear and it, it is a really cool feeling. Mm. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. It's, uh, uh we, we did, um, uh, so there's a couple of music stores, uh, in, but well, it's a chain of music stores in the UK, uh, called PMT. Oh, I know them. We, yeah. Yep. We, they're, they're great. They're great guys there. Um, in every store, they're fantastic. They really know the stuff. Um, and we, we did a, um, it was called Tone Made Achievable. Uh, and it was kind of like the guitar show, but using Yamaha and Line 6 equipment. 
so instead of uh, you know instead of an SG, we'd use the uh, you know a, a Rev Star or something like that. You sure. know, instead of a strap, we'd use a Pacifica. Nice. Um, uh, we used all the Helix stuff, and we even used the Spider. Um, and yeah, uh, it's amazing how many people went to the counter afterwards and uh, started. Like, oh, yeah, I've got all Helix and all this, <laughs> and the, you know. It's <laughs> I love those guys. They're very active on YouTube, uh, and, and it shows that they get it as well, too. Absolutely. I mean, the, that, that's the thing, and that I think that's that's why Line Six liked the show because we said to those guys, "We look, we we get this. Mm-hmm. You know, the, this is you know, this is everything the show like us needs. You know, we we get what you're trying to do, um, and and it works. You know, and here's, here's the proof of it." That's right. Well, that's that's where the whole p- passion for this show come about. I mean, I was just going to, mm. after getting a Helix, I was just going to go do some demos and say, you know, like, this is the coolest thing I've since sliced bread for me. And I was not a digital guy whatsoever. I was probably mm. one of the last few people out there. Well, no, I shouldn't say that. But I mean, I was the person that did not want to go digital if my life depended on it. And then I yeah. realized how much it simplified my life. And as Andrew will say from Line 6, I, I like to quote him a lot of times, and I'm sure I'm going to ruin his quote, but... You know, with with this technology, you can make it as simple as you want it or as complicated as you want it and anywhere in between. You know, if you want it simple, you could pop on even one block. I was going to say two blocks, an amp and a cab, but you could actually put an amp cab block in there and feed that to your Mm. front of house engineer and you could be ready to rock all night. I said this just the other night on my power cab demo. It it can be that simple. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And and there's... um you know, you don't have to have tons of blocks on there as well because, I mean, the, you know, the volume control on your guitar works so well with the Helix. It does respond, doesn't you, it? it? Yeah, you, you you just clean it up, you know. You don't need two or three overdrives on there or, or whatever. You know, you just get a nice, you know, nice gain structure on your amp and then, you know, wind the volume back and if that's what you want to do, or you can go crazy. That's right. <laughs> that's right. Well, I, I mean, you probably use more presets on a given night than some people do. Now, my, myself, when I do some live demos, <clears> I have one preset I use all the time. It's a, it's a three-channel <clears> amplifier, even with an acoustic guitar, too. So technically, a three-channel amplifier and an acoustic guitar, and I could stay on that for the entire night. I could, if, if Helix only came with that, I could live with that for the rest of my life. But for you... How many yeah. presets would you go through in a in a two hour show? I'm really curious. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna just throw a number out here. I don't oh. know. Would you go through thirty? Let me look. I, I, okay. I've actually got it here. Um, it's in front of me. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirty, four, fifty, sixty, seventeen, eighteen, ninety, twenty, twenty one, twenty two. Oh my goodness, twenty three, two. There's about twenty seven, twenty eight presets there and we use um the ball each preset has snapshots built into it as well nice so yeah obviously so. because you're, you're replicating so many styles of guitar players from Jimi hendrix to you know david gilmore and there's so many tone changes and, and eras right of just how technology mm. changed throughout all those years that you have yeah. to really really change and that's one of the cool things imagine back in the day before this technology existed the rigs that you oh. would have to travel i mean for the average band without you know million dollar wallets there's just no way you could mm. travel with that gear exactly i mean we, we we kind of did that right at the beginning of mm-hmm. the show um we we had uh, myself and toby we had uh, a couple of amps i think we had some fenders two rocks um fox and i think we did one maybe two shows with the amps and then just went nah this ain't gonna work <laughs> <laughs> pedal boards are as big as the stage sure just like no this ain't gonna work so then we really knuckled down um got rid of those and then like say the hd 500 was you know was the was the thing that we used pretty much i saw a lot of people on youtube i follow a lot of people actually on youtube that were doing uh, using the hd before uh, helix came out and i was actually quite mm-hmm. impressed and i actually i backwards discovered it if you believe it or not so i knew about helix before i knew about that so i went back and watched some of these videos oh, okay. and, and the tones that people were getting i was like wow this is very very cool never had the opportunity to yeah. try one but if i see one used in the store or whatever i'll i'll certainly give it a, a whirl for sure Let's jump over and say hi to a few more people, address some more questions. And when we come back, speaking of presets, we're going to talk about the one that you've provided for us today. And actually, I'll mention out to my Nocturnal Butterfly right now. She can go ahead and post that link right now. And it's a Dropbox link where you guys can. And that's for Helix. Is that correct? It's Helix. Okay. I wasn't sure if it was Helix or Stomp. So there we go. So we have a Dropbox link for that. And when we come back, I'll have you uh, talk about it a little bit and maybe give us a couple little samples as well, too. So back over in the chat, we have Forrest Hale saying, I love this kind of show for the same reason I love Rick Beato. I get introduced to so many people I never knew about. Very, very nice. And that's I'm very happy to hear that. 
Uh, Joe Hervey uh, wasn't feeling well last night. Very sorry about that. Hugh Caldwell seen the Guitar Hero show in Glasgow. It was awesome. Uh, let me see. What else have I missed here as well, too? Um, let's go down a little further. I tend to be really bad in the chat, and, and everyone knows that, and they, they tend to... Uh, <laughs> They tend to, you know, kind of put up with it. Trevor Klein is here. Uh, Chad Husky saying hi to friends. Uh, Chris Link is here. Uh, let me see here. And people talking about some of the new features of uh, 2.8. We'll talk about that later on in the program as well, too. But one comment from AZ yeah. says, 2.8, King of Tone is awesome. Very, very cool. Uh, and this is a good question from, uh, one second, I'm just going to say yes on that on the link. Uh, that's for the link for the download. Uh, Scott Connor, one of our good friends and regulars here, says, A question for those of us not in the UK or not traveling there, is the story of Guitar Heroes show uh, going to get a release on DVD or Blu-ray or any kind of streaming services? We have thought about that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we have thought about it. Um, it's probably not for around 12 months, I would have thought. Um, but yeah, it's something we have, we have definitely considered, um, and and it will be on the website straight away as soon as we do do anything like that. Uh, but yeah, we I mean, there's always things up on YouTube. Uh, we're always putting bits and pieces up there. Um, a lot of behind the scenes stuff that we, we try to get up there. I'm trying to get another video up there this week, more nice. behind the scenes stuff. But um, but yeah, an actual um, sort of like concert, if you like. We 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 have thought about it. It's, you know, we're, we're not saying no, but. We're, Probably not for around 12 months, I would thought. Sure. And, I mean, there's costs involved in that as well, too. I mean, obviously, all the ducks have to be in a row. Yeah, yeah for sure. But there's two videos that I have links that you've provided me, which is great. One is kind of a teaser trailer, very, very short, five minutes or less. And we have that linked in the description down below. And we also cool. have uh, the one demo you're doing of the HX Stomp, just to let people know mm. what it's capable of. And, like, I mean... I know what these devices are capable of. When I watch you play, I was like, no wonder I'm hearing this feedback from people about your playing. I mean, you really captured not only the tone, and that's hard. It's, I mean, people think it's just so easy to dial in this stuff. It's not necessarily that easy. It can be for more for some people, but then you have to know Ooh. the notes, and then you have to be able to try and get in the shoes of David Gilmour or yeah. Slash, Hendrix, whoever, right? All those factors. Exactly. Yeah, a lot of factors together. Yeah. Well, that's perfect timing. Let's talk about the preset. You tell us a little bit about it. We already have the link for people to download it. And um, you can right. see what it contains and maybe even give us a little bit of uh, some sound samples. Yeah, exactly. Well, it's, it, it's, it's actually a really simple preset, but it's, uh, it's a song that we do in the show, Another Brick in the Wall by Pink Floyd. Um, and it, it's, it, like I say, it's a really, really simple preset. We've got, um, I can tell you what's on there now. We've got the Red Squeeze compressor. Um, I've got a volume uh, block on there that I, I, I don't actually use it on the song, but it's just there anyway. Okay. Um, and for drive on the solo, um, I use a valve driver. Um, the amp is a Who What 100 with the uh, 412 cab that goes with that. We then have for modulation the 70s chorus. And the delay we use, uh, the intro, which I'll, I'll demonstrate it, is just a simple delay. It's just a, a, a dotted eighth delay. Nice. Um, the delay for the solo, again, is uh, just another simple delay. Um, in, in That's in tempo with the song. Um, and we've got some verb on there as well. We just use the room uh, reverb on that. Um, now, when, when I do play, because um, this, is, this is quite interesting, actually. When, when I do play... Uh, this when I'll do a demo of this for you in a second. Um, it might sound um, might sound like there's loads of effect on there, but if you put that into the mix, right, you know, of, of the show and everybody else playing it, it, you know, sometimes you think, oh, is there enough? <laughs> <laughs> true, but, true. But it, it, it sounds quite swimmy at the moment. Um, but like I said, we should get it in. We should get it in the mix. And if anybody downloads this preset and want to do it in the band or anything, they'll get it. They'll go, oh right, yeah, I see. And so don't start dialing everything back. You know, right. just try it as it is and, and see what you think. Um, and, and that's an interesting thing I was going to say before I forget about the um, about the amp blocks. Um, you can you well know that we can put noise gates on them, mm -hmm. and, and this is something that um, a sound guy that we had said to us. He, he says, oh, he says you're your pedal board is really noisy. And I went, yeah, I know. He goes, have you got a noise gate on it? And I went, no, 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 no. He, he says, oh, well, you, why aren't you putting one on? He goes, I said, well, do, would an AC30 have a noise gate on it? 
you know, would, would, would a Marshall JCM 800 have a noise gate on it? No, it wouldn't. This is what an amp would sound like. So, right. you know, you, you can get a great sound and then you you put a noise gate on there and then it just doesn't seem to sound the same. But, you know, it's listen to it sizzle. You know, that's what they do. That's right. <laughs> well, is a Plexi going to have an effects loop on it too, right? Uh, yeah, you know? yeah, right. <laughs> so that's that's very cool. Though. Very good advice for where people would like myself. Uh, you know, I'll use myself for an example. I would be like, okay, let's run a noise gate. And the, one of the things I, I know we're going off on a bit of a tangent, but one of the things I learned to free up real estate on the board is put the noise gate yeah. at the input source as opposed to an actual block. If you yes, want to turn that yes. on, so save some DSP that way. Not that it takes much, anyways. But I like the fact yeah. that that's another example of how much you're committed to the tone. That okay, this Vox is going to sound like this. I don't want to change it going out to you. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. You know, it's we do um, we do a song, uh, "Purple Rain" by Prince. Oh my the, goodness! The start of that song. Oh, it's a great song. Uh, the, the, the start of that is, you know, it's nice and clean. Mm -hmm. um, and then when it goes into the solo, I mean, this thing is. <laughs> yeah. You know, the amp, it, it, oh, the, the supposedly amp is frying. Um, and it just doesn't sound the same when you start putting noise gates on this. I just took them all off and, you know, <laughs> I kind of said to the sound guy, deal with it. <laughs> yep. Well, that's the thing, too. Like you say, alone on its own, naked, it's going to be like goodness. But in that mix, yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm not a sound engineer by any means. That's another reason why I love Helix, because I don't have to be a sound engineer anymore. But, you know, you listen to some of these things where you got these swimming reverbs and delays on their own, and then you play it in the mix. I, you said it exactly. where it's like, I think I need more. And it takes discipline to know yeah, yeah. when to cut that out, right? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. You just got to... It, it's a difficult thing when, you know, I'm sat here in my studio now, and this is where most of my um, sounds are programmed. And then, you know, you, you spend most of the rehearsal when you get in with the band... Um, on your knees altering things <laughs> i know you know or not on your knees with the helix as it may be you know you can stand up and do it can't you? that's right that's right it's an amazing thing but uh, but yeah yeah you, you get it to a certain point and then you've just got to mix it again you know i'll program it again with the band that's right I have a question i didn't have for you but i thought maybe this might be a good uh, good chance to ask and i don't think i've really asked this of many of our other guests before how do you like to create presets? Are you using headphones, uh, reference monitors, a uh, combination of, of many things? Can you share with us maybe your approach to creating presets? Um, well, considering I'm a little bit of a dinosaur, <laughs> I, um, I've got some. I've got a 20 year old Panasonic um, stereo system, you know, hi-fi unit. Okay. Uh, and the speakers are, are quite old. I think they. I'm just looking at them now. I think they're probably. Eight, six eight inch speakers in there um quite old the cabs the, uh, are quite deep though mm -hmm. um and i start doing everything through there wow um and yeah it, it's it's crazy i should get some really good reference monitors and make my life a lot easier probably but um that, that's how i start doing it and um, i start putting and, and the other thing as well uh, when i'm programming sound is um eric clapton for example has has had many different guitar rigs um, he's had many different strats, you know, um, he's had three, three fives and, and you've got to think which, you know, which sound are people going to relate to the most, mm -hmm. um, which, which is going to be the most familiar sound to people. I mean, Layla is done, you know, with Derek and the Dominoes, that's one sound, uh, um, you know, through the nineties when he went through his like chorus phase and the Soldanos, that's yeah. another sound. Uh, now he's got a different sound again. You know, using the fenders and, and not much else, and so you've got to think right. We've got to get a happy medium here of what what is going to work, and um, and it doesn't necessarily mean that we um, use the Soldano or we use the Fender. Um, I'm a big fan of the um, of the AC15 model on there. Love that amp. I mean, I've got a, a, an AC10 in my studio, so mm -hmm. I'm always like Vox. Um, so that's kind of a good starting point for me as well. Um, so I know that amp really well. Um, yeah, so it's again, you know, finding the right era that you want to get the sound of. Well, that's. I think yeah. you uh, provided some great tips here for people that want to get into Helix or Stomp or anything of that nature, and they're afraid that okay, maybe I have to have this. Maybe I have to have a power cap. Maybe I have to have ten thousand yeah. dollar phones or monitors or whatever. But you're running through a hi-fi system because, you know, at the end of the, the end of the day, what we're hearing coming out of Helix a lot of times is, and I people would always say this to me: I want to get Eddie Van Halen's tone, or I want to get Jimi Hendrix's tone. 
I think really what they're saying is, and correct me if I'm wrong here, I could be out on the limb when they say this. Just insert any guitar player's name here, David Gilmore maybe. When they say his mm. tone, they want it, they're referring to what's on the record, not necessarily what he sounds yeah. like, they sound like live. It's when they're comparing, mm. that's what their favorite record. You know, Comfortably Numb, I want it to sound like that. Yeah. Not talk about live. And that's what you're hearing is hi-fi, high fidelity, you know, mastered sound. Just like yeah. our good friend, I'm sure you know him in the community, Jason Seditis, uh, one of my Canadian buddies here. I learned the trick from him about you know, putting EQ and compression at the end of the chain because you're now mastering what's coming out, what you would do in a studio environment anyways. If you think of it that way, yeah. you're, you're duplicating the artist's record tone for the most part, I think. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And, and you know, and again people in in studios they've got well it's unlimited isn't it that you can hire in whatever you want mm -hmm. uh, into a studio um but trying to take that out on the road you yeah. know is another i was guess david gilmore did do that though didn't he i mean the uh, size time. of his live rig <laughs> <laughs> yeah well i think but, he could uh, afford yeah, it but, <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah yeah exactly yeah he's got more people probably working on his guitar rig than we have on the whole show so i know i know yeah <laughs> But great sound though. <laughs> you can't I, take that away from him. But you know, the helix is just is just great for that because we 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 can get that um, studio sound of Clapton um, or, or Slash or BB King or, or any anybody that we choose to do in the show, and we can just you know take it with us in a flight case. It's perfect. <laughs> now I know in your case too. I know we're getting a little off on tangent because we're going to come back and talk about and hear about your preset. But yeah, even sure. bands that are on a smaller scale than the big theatrical productions that you do, let's say uh, you got a, a top 40 rock band, you know, doing the, the weekend grind Friday, Saturday, Sunday, every week or more so. And they're doing everything mm. from Devo to Van Halen to Iron Maiden to, you know, the cars. Now yeah. they can, I mean, it's so cool to be able to do that and have a, the tone that's really pleasing the audience, even though the audience doesn't know, like the most most audiences don't know the difference between a Marshall and a Vox and a, and a Mesa or whatever, but they're hearing things mm -hmm. sub, subconsciously. Like that really sounds like when I heard that song for the first time and that provides that tool that you just couldn't do for the average bar band. Absolutely. Yeah, totally agree. And, and the other thing as well that, um, I know why a lot of people are moving over to this is because you can't have um, a 50 watt amp, you know, cranked anymore in a venue. I know. You can't do that. I know. Um, so this is, you know, this is a, a great solution for that, you know, and, and you're not, I've got to be honest, you, you're not losing quality, you know. No. It's just great. As, as being a person being on both sides of the fence, being a, a live performer in the clubs and also being a patron, uh, you know, watching my friends' bands or just going out for a drink and watching bands, um, the, you know, the fact that you may necessarily not have to scream at the top of your lungs and go home with no voice left at the end of the night, I know that's an experience all in itself, but at the same time, you know, things are getting a little quieter and the fidelity is a lot bigger. You're not screaming over a 412. I, I think that's we are we're, we've lost a lot of things with the live entertainment industry. Like there's no smoking in bars anymore, and you know the the crowd numbers are getting lower. You know yeah. there's a lot of negative, but there's a lot of positive where we're going in technology as well too. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I'm not I'm not the greatest for technology. Um, some of the guys in the in the show will verify. I quite quite often order my food on an app to a completely different town. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, so t technology is not my friend. Um, but, to, you know, there are thousands and thousands of people like me, you know, and you will get on with this unit. You know, you don't have to be that in that way inclined to get on with this unit. Oh, um, totally. And you can create a great tone quickly. Well, before we, just as we jump into your preset, I'll show you something that kind of flabbergasted me. Uh, a while back, I did um, I did a demo mm -hmm. saying, okay, so you got a new Line 6 Helix. What do you do with it? And so I, in my short little video, I said, okay, first thing you want to do is update the firmware. You always want to have the latest if you can. And then do this, do this. I gave some resources where you want to go for tones and things like that. And I said, okay, now let's create a preset. And I literally did this. I, I put an amp, a cab, and then I put my, my comfort. My, if you want to talk about comfort food, well, we'll talk about comfort effects reverb and some delay and maybe a couple of things but i think i just went like that and people were commenting saying can i have that preset and i'm like do you really want this you know what i mean like it was nothing i did not go into it with any intentions of making a good preset i just went like click yeah. click 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 and please let that be and like a kind of a guide to show you that two three four blocks you could be all done 
it's that simple don't yeah, be intimidated by it but let's stop yeah. talking let's hear let's let's have a, a look and listen <laughs> to this preset Okay, I'm going to turn around a little bit. Cause, you um, go right ahead. Get comfortable. The, I'll use the snapshots on the Helix. I've got the Helix just to the side of me. So. No problem. Um, so we'll start with the um, like the beginning of the song, which is the delays. Then I'll go into the rhythm part and then a, uh, a bit of the solo. So. Perfect. <laughs> Dig it. I gotta. I also address this to the people watching right now as well too. Please keep in mind what you're hearing is just microphone uh, from the computer picking that up. It's not stereo, and even if it was stereo, yeah. uh, Skype as our vehicle today will um, bring it to me. We'll be, make it in a mono feed. That sounds amazing. It sounds like you got a nice compressed tube amp thank in you. the room there. Yeah, thank you very much. And I'm actually using those cheap hi-fi speakers that I told you about. <laughs> no way. <laughs> But yeah, I need that 212 power cab. If Paul Heinmarsh is listening, <laughs> Paul, I need the 212 <laughs> power cab. It's pretty damn cool. It's pretty damn cool. I, I was That's a question I was going to ask you later on. Maybe we'll just jump into that for a second, and we'll circle back mm. to this. So, uh, yeah. and I, I know I know the answer to this because you shared this with me off the air. So you, you haven't had the opportunity yet to try power cabs and because you're strictly amplis on stage at this point, right? Exactly. I've used, um, I used a power cab once. I was doing um, uh, a, a demo for, for Line 6, um, and I, I was blown away with it then. And But that's the only time I've ever used it. And on stage, we uh, we all use in-ear monitoring, which is uh, which is great, you mm-hmm. know, um, again, keeping it compact. And I've used in-ear monitoring for, well, crikey, as long as I can remember. Um but yeah, sometimes you just think oh, it would be nice to have just a, a little bit of something on stage, um, especially when we do the real big venues. Um, if the PA, well, if, we, if the PA is you know pretty close to us, then you don't need it. You know, mm-hmm. it it's great. Um, uh, there's a, a song we do, uh, Parisian Walkways, and there's the bit you know the long sustaining. Um, <laughs> The, yeah. the, you know, that note that just goes on and on and on. If the PA is close enough, then you may as well have a marshal behind you because it just keeps going and going and going. Um, in the bigger venues where the PA is, you know, really far apart, you, you, you know, you sometimes think, yeah, it would be nice to have something like the power cab on stage where we can, because it doesn't affect the front of house mix. We can, you know, you can have it as loud, quiet as you need it. That's right. Well, just the other night, as I was telling you off the air too, I did a demo and what, what I want to try to convey in the demo, uh, and you, when you do these live demos, just like a live show today, not anything can go wrong. Um, but most people are showing what it sounds like direct, right? Running direct the XLR outs. But I want to try to put a couple microphones in front of it, which I did. And I, I was very pleased with how it turned out. It was actually, I started off with an acoustic, very axe acoustic. It sounded like a big old Martin guitar. And I had mics panned hard left and right. And people, including myself, were like, well, this sounds very, very pleasant. It was very, very nice and robust. Mm. And it's just nice to get that kick. And as I was telling mm. you, I was kind of giving you some of the features of the 212 off the air. Being rear ported as it is, you know, it can really fill that stage and just let some of that air escape. Um, your bass player yeah. might hear over here, depending on where the, the bass player is. It just really fills the stage. But it is nice to get that kick. I, I've never performed live as a musician with uh, in-ears. I never have. It was always okay. a wedge of some sort. So I don't have that experience. I've used it here in the studio. Yeah. But live, yeah. you know, I'm missing my drummer or missing the guitar, whatever else. I didn't have that experience. But I think if you did have one, especially the 212, it just, it's its really cool. It just connects you on a different level as far as what you're yeah. hearing and feeling. And then in front of the house, of course, still gets the same thing. Gets your, your preset the way you have it. Absolutely, absolutely. And like I'm saying, in, in, in a bigger venue, you're not you are not going to really notice if there's, a, you know, a power cab on stage that's cranked a little bit more than normal. In a smaller venue, you know, you might not even need it. So Agreed. For, for us, anyway. <laughs> one of one of, uh, of of some of our mutual friends here from people watching the chat here, uh, Chris Chris uh, Robertson from Blackstone Cherry. He's been on my show a couple of times. He's become a friend of the family here. Uh, thanks to my wife, actually. I had to get him on the show or else she was going to disown me. So I got him on the show, and he started using, uh, like he uses Helix Live. He's on tour pretty much 
I'd say 300, 300 days a year practically. I, that's probably an exaggeration, wow. but he's always on tour. On tour right now over yeah. in Europe and coming back this way soon. But Helix all the time on the stage and all the members are using uh, Helix products. And then he started using PowerCab on stage. And then he said recently, up, upwards of about a month ago, he said, oh man, if, if Line 6 would just come out with a 212, I would take two of these in a heartbeat. One for North America and then one he would leave over in Europe. So, you know, no freight yep. shipping and stuff like that. And I mean, you know, it, it just was like, oh, Chris, hang on, hang on. It's, you know, we didn't say that, but just the patience yeah, and yeah. here we are, right? It's those musicians are going to just uh, love this thing, uh, you know, for sure. You know, it's it's almost like you know, Line Six really listen to people. Sure, they do. You, you know, it's the same with well, it's the same with the um, HX Stomp. Um, it's the same with the wireless systems. Um, you know, the, the Spider, even the, um, the you know the M20D, the, the mixer that that came out. You know, the the listen to you know the musician and the, you know they produce what they want. That's right. You know, it's. I mean, they're a, they're a great company, and like I say, I'm you know I'm not I'm involved with them now, but I wasn't you know, and I was a Line Six user for years and years before you know the, we we got involved. That's very cool. I mean, it goes to show you that there's been brand loyalty for a long time, so that t- it truly helps. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, we like I say, I'm, you know, the type of solutions that we need for the. Um, problems we get you know the volume problems you can't take three amps with you you know you want to you, you want five different delays you want this and that or the other you know i mean it's it's always been line six for me you know since, since my early 20s so yeah great to hear there's a question that came in from one of our friends here scott connor i don't have it in front of me but i just remembered it as it came to me here uh, he said something along the lines of it, you know, it's cool when one member, will, I'm kind of paraphrasing what he said, it's kind of cool mm. when one band member will make the switch, but it's hard to con- convince the entire band, you know, to move to this platform. In your case, you said you have, and I can give mm. a couple examples. Um, and, well, I'll give you <clears> one example that's uh, come through the show here as well, too. So Billy Sheehan, he's going to be my final guest on the show either next Sunday or the Sunday after. He's obviously a right. big advocate of, of Helix. Uh, some of his presets are built right into it, and his amplifiers and that kind of thing. But look at Billy. Mm. Billy is like you in the band. Billy brought to Sons of Apollo. He's got uh, Bumblefoot, Ron Thal, using Helix now. Derek Schrinning on keyboards. Yeah. I mean, look at that. I mean, the only the only yeah. two people that aren't using Helix in the band is Mike Portnoy and Jeff Scott Soto. I mean, <laughs> Jeff could use it for his vocals if he wanted to. Yeah, 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 definitely. Oh, yeah. I mean, it, it's. Um, it, I mean, this show really. We kind of. Well, I won't say there are any rules or anything like that in our show, but we always said there were no amps on stage, mm-hmm. even for the even for the bass players. You know, um, I mean, you've got an SVT in here, so why? <laughs> You know, front front of house it sounds like one. So, um, and we we've we've got quite a um, you know we've got quite a decent lighting show and a, a nice little stage set and what have you. And um, you know, it'd be difficult sort of placing you know stacks of amps and things like that anyway. So we and we wanted to keep it consistent. Even our drummer has the um, the uh, plexiglass screen. Yeah, I've seen that. So, yeah. Know, yeah, that got that controls um, that you know it's great for after the house guy you can really control it. Um, so uh, yeah, so the, the, the getting on uh, the helix, yeah, they um, they was it um, Toby had the HD five hundred as well, um, and he switched to the helix pretty much the same time I did. Um, he, he was just so impressed with it, and then uh, the new guy Lee who came into the show, he he's now on a helix. But an interesting thing with this is. Um, all these guys come in, you know, they get the helix and they've got these huge pedal boards and, mm-hmm. and they still put the pedals on there, Yeah, you know, and which you can integrate with helix perfectly. When I've got, um, I've got a new, I'll send you photos of my pedal boards and, you know, I have got, um, there's one drive pedal that I'm a big fan of. There's a compressor that I'm a big fan of. Um, love those. Uh, so I've got one of those on each of my boards. Um, but you slowly see them taking these pedals off. Yeah, one by one, slowly, <laughs> pick, pick and choose. Yeah, when Toby, when he started, we called it his battleship pedal board. You know, it, it was enormous. Yeah. And, and and slowly it's gone down. And I think the only drive pedal he's got on there now is a king of tone. Um, but now with the update, I don't know how long <laughs> that's going to stay on there. <laughs> I know. I know. That's right. Like, it's like, okay, why am I traveling with this stuff? I did the same thing too. I mean, the, the subtleties between the pedals, like if it's a signature artist pedal, the subtleties what was between that and what was in Helix, 
I, I would be lying if I said that I could tell the differences. I mean, it was not yeah. enough to I did not enough to keep the pedals. It just wasn't. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, like they say, everybody's kind of got their their favorite little, you know, something. Mm-hmm, um, of course, I've, I've got. Um, in fact, I've got. Something else I've got on there a Digitech Freakout. Yeah, everyone. A lot of people um, use Network uh, Helix. It's a great thing. Then Pete Thorne, I think he uses one yep. um, with the Helix as well. Um, and the, the the Purple Rain solo that I do when I first go into the when I first go into that, you know, mm-hmm. you, you just stick it on there and you get a real nice harmonic, you know, um, feedback coming off of it. And, and that's the only time I use that in the show. <laughs> Maybe I wouldn't need them with it if I had a power cab. I don't know. <laughs> you, never, you never know. Well, that's, I hear a lot of people using that myself as well, too. And I think Pete was one of the first people to really come out and do some big exposure demos with that. And a lot of people have mm-hmm. used it since. So very, very mm-hmm. cool. Just a quick hello to a few other people here as well, too. Alec Bourne is jumping in with us. Uh, and I don't know if I've missed anyone else. But one of the things I want to come back about, you talk about you know favorite presets, favorite pedals, and things like that as well. This may be a loaded question. It's almost like asking a parent mm-hmm. to name their favorite kid. Um, and maybe for some people they can do that. I don't know. But do you have, like, of all the artists that you cover, is there a favorite artist that you have? Like, when you play that particular artist's tone, uh, or, you know, maybe a couple pieces from them that you zone out, and myself guessing, outside looking in, I would think, and I, I don't know a lot about you, so I'm just guessing from an outsider, I would think for you it might be David Gilmore from Pink Floyd, but can you share with us if the, the magic moment for you in the night where you get to zone out? Yeah, I mean, I'm a massive fan of David Gilmore. You're absolutely right. Um, I, I'm I'm kind of a strat guy. Nice. Um, I, I always have been. Well, since I was 11, this very one. But um, yeah, yeah, I've been a strat guy. So I, I really like the strat players. Um, I, I, for some reason, I really, really enjoy playing Sultans of Swain. Nice. Um, I, I just love playing that song. It's yeah, maybe because you know. I've been a Dice Straits fan since I was since I was a kid, um, but I love playing that. Um, another single coil player is um, Albert Lee, who we do in the show, and I I really enjoy playing that. Uh, you know, that's we would do Country Boy, and that's that's just a great song. Um, you have a so, signature some, guitar, don't you? We do. Yeah, we I saw that. I saw that. Song. Yeah, that's yeah, wicked. Yeah, yeah. It's um, yeah, I, I had to have that. <laughs> I, the, I'm, a, I'm a fan anyway. It's funny that you mentioned Sultans of Swing because this is no lie. The very first, the very first notes I heard come from you uh, was I'm, mm. so I'm, I'm studying, and it was a live demo uh, somewhere. Uh, maybe maybe it's the one where you said maybe you told the Line Six guys to come in, but you're a small stage. You had I think it was even a Line Six uh, PA system. I think I could be wrong on that. Yeah. I think yeah. you were playing a Variax. And you were playing yeah. that solo, and people were just kind of there quiet. They didn't know what to expect. All of a sudden, you started playing that, and you saw people like they're either looking at their phones or else, and they're like, oh. and that was really cool. <laughs> and it was salt into a swing. Thank and you. and yes, the way you're you. rolling the finger picking on that, I mean, you really did it just, justice. Oh, appreciate that. Thank you so much. Um, I remember that demo. It was um, it, it was in Exeter, and they, it, it, it was, what was it? It was, um, it was an effects fest, Manson's Music Effects Fest. And, okay. Uh, Yamaha were there with uh, Line Six. Yeah, and I went up and I was doing um, basically. Uh, it was I was just on on my own, um, so I had to do backing tracks, and I was doing a uh, how many sounds can you get out of the Variax, you know, type, type thing. Um, mm-hmm. And I think the video that I put together on YouTube were um, Strat sounds, so uh, or Strat players using the Variax and Helix, and I think there were. Uh, like you said, Sons of Swing, um, Die Straits, there was some Jimi Hendrix. Um, who else did that? I did Albert Lee, actually, mm-hmm. um, although he plays the Music Man, it's the you know, three singles. Um, some of the Shadows. Uh, so, yeah, it's, um, yeah, it's on, the, on the YouTube channel. It's the yeah, Strat Tones from a Fairy Axe and the Helix. Yeah. Is very very good, and that's I was like, wow, it was absolutely amazing. And that's why I get questions to me sometimes. People will say like they'll see me playing the the Shuriken Variax. We got one humbucker in there, you mm. know, kind of an homage back to the you know the '80s shred guitars in a way, but still a modern yeah. look to it. People are like, well, you know, how do you how do you compensate for not having the neck pickup? How do you compensate for this, or what do you do, or are you disappointed, whatever? You go into like mm. uh, either Twang or a Spank. Or you know, which you you know, emulating either a Telecaster or a Stratocaster, you've got Lester for a Les Paul, it, very very versatile. I mean, and and not only that, it's a five way pickup switch on a one pickup guitar. Yeah. People can't seem to wrap their head around that, but holy cow, it's there. 
and responding to the tone knob, you know, like it's, it's very, very cool. Very, very versatile. So don't be intimidated. And I think that's also a good point too. Scott Roos, one of our friends here, he says, um, our bass player is a bit of a technophobe. He will use my bass pod XT space live, uh, but will only leave all the knobs at the middle position, afraid to veer from that. And I correct me if I'm wrong here, or tell me if you, if you agree with me, don't be mm. afraid to go outside the norm. You're not going to break anything. You, I mean, you're really not going to break anything. And what you'll discover is, is endless. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. I mean, you, you can do whatever you want to do, you know, just don't press save until you're happy. <laughs> You know, you, you just if you find set the ball, you know, at twelve o'clock, um, you know, tinker around with it, just just go for it, you know. And, and if you're not happy, well, just press the preset button again and bring your sounds back up, you know, or save it somewhere else. That's right. I do that all the time too, just in case I'm I'm backing up like crazy. I'm moving things around. I've got so many versions of the same preset. Sometimes I have to look at them. And you know what? You know what I wish they had. Maybe this is maybe this is a, a thing for idea scale. And I know that this will never get implemented, but I know people like the Eric Kleins of the world will appreciate this because they're you know they're programmers, right? Is how almost yeah. have like a version history of your own preset. So version one point two, I brought up the gain on the EQ block or whatever, just so you know what you did differently because we can never remember, right? <laughs> exactly, exactly. Here's a good question from DJ. He's jumping in the chat. Says, "What pickups are in that Strat?" He's a big uh, Strat fan. What do you have in that Strat? Um, the originals that it came with. Oh, nice. Um, yeah, this is a it's a Japanese. Um, Strat. It's in um, 1985, I believe. It's a 70s reissue, one of the first ones, uh, one of the first Japanese reissues. Um, yeah, and it's. I used to have um, Seymour Duncan Hot Rails in there, but um, yeah, just I, I don't know why I did that, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, if, uh, a couple of years ago, I put it all back to pretty much back to normal. Um, it's got different tuners on there, different nuts, um, saddles. It's had one refret in thirty odd years. Wow! So that's not that's not bad. <laughs> not bad at all. Um, another person that's jumping in, one of our regulars and good friends here as well, too, Dave Ara's guitars. I know he's going to love that preset. He's a he plays a lot of uh, Pink Floyd on his live streams. He's a big fan. I can't wait right. for him to get that preset and try it. That's going to be fantastic. Um, just, just for curiosity, just in case people haven't updated to 2.8, is it, is it older compatible or is it 2.8, um, only? Uh, I did it on, I did it on the one before 2.8. Okay. Um, 2.71, 2. I think. 2.71, was it? Perfect. Yeah. There you go. Uh, I did it, I did it on that one. Um, and I'm using it now on 2.8. So. Perfect. Okay, good. And Matt Krill says, let's hear some Sultan. So I'm not, not necessarily to put you on the spot and we will risk. That's okay. We'll, 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 we'll play, we'll play a roulette here with the YouTube copyright gods. Why don't we take it through <laughs> a little bit of uh, some of the famous licks from that one. Okay. In the style of. In the style. There, there go. you go. All right. Perfect. <laughs> Is that just enough? <laughs> <laughs> That's probably good. That's perfect. And it's so so effortless. Now, do you play banjo or anything like that? Um, have you seen my banjo? <laughs> okay. Yeah, I, I do a little bit. A okay, little bit. because your, your rolling technique is very, very... I mean, I can't play that style. I just can't. But it seems like it's a very natural thing to you. How Did, like, did that technique take a while to, to gravitate to? Uh, well, again, it, I think um, I've got my mum to thank for forcing me into classical guitar lessons. Um, and, and then I saw Albert Lee, who did the hybrid picking. So um, I kind of... You've got your, your classical style, which I, I don't really know any classical music anymore, unfortunately. Um, and then um, when I saw Albert Lee doing a, a you know, using a pick and, mm -hmm. um, I'll, just, I'll just put a, a slightly cleaner sound on there. Um, you, you've got, you know, I then discovered that, oh, you can use these with a pick. And then that's how I kind of, wow. you know, kind of use both. I like that. No, that's a good technique for sure. Thank you. Very, very well done. Here's a question from oh, Joe Hervey says, uh, if the neck pickup has too much low end bass, what can I do to pull some more, if, 
pull some more base. Okay, pulling out. I tried lowering my base out of the pickup. I've also used a middle option. Should I keep trying to adjust the height? I, w- I wouldn't necessarily f- uh, fool too much with the pickup height, but what I've done a couple times, I did this recently on a live stream where I was, I think I was actually literally using uh, the Shuriken Variax, okay? And there's a song, mm-hmm. one of my own songs where I play where it has a very, very chimey, um, like a, a Strat second position uh, pickup. So you know how that can get very chimey, right? That's a lot of people's favorite yeah. spot position too. Yeah. What I do yeah. is I shift, I could have went into a Variax mode, but I was keeping it on magnetic pickups and I adjust my pickup, my picking position. So for a very nice yeah. clean, uh, as I'm uh, kind of arpeggiating a nice clean chord, I will pick right over the neck of the guitar. And then when mm-hmm. I want it bright again, I'll move my hand back. So you can all, always alternate your your picking position as well too. You're getting too much bass, play a little further back. Would you agree with that? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that, you know, that makes a, I mean, you got your, you know, it, it makes a massive difference. And, and the other thing as well, um, which I use a lot, uh, are tone controls on the guitar. Okay. Um, so if, if there's one, you know, pickup that's, you know, slightly out with the other one, um, so like your neck pickup, um, then I would probably um, maybe set set it so it's a bit brighter, set your sound so it's a little bit brighter when it's on the neck pickup. Um, and then when you get roll back to the... Um, you know, like you say, the, the spanky sound or the bridge pickup, then just roll the tone back so you can even it out a little bit. Perfect. Very well said. Here's here's something, too. I've mentioned this name a few times today, but I, I want to say it again for the sole fact that it was a huge, momentous uh, uh, learning tip for me. Chris Robertson, again, from Blackstone Cherry. He's his One of his parts of his signature sound is fuzz. And um, I've never been a fuzz guy. I just never, I never got it. I never, like, I mean, I mad respect, but to me, it's always like tapping stuff and whammy bar dives and fuzz just never got me. But because I was scared of it as well, too. So I, I, I didn't like it because I feared it. And I'm, I'm curious if, if you've learned this or used this technique. I shouldn't say learned, but used this technique. What he does, he rolls his tone completely flat, plays on the neck pickup, and when we're talking like octave fuzz, like the Octavios and the mm-hmm. things like that that are built into to Helix, have you ever tried fuzz, um, octave fuzz, and the neck pickup and the tone rolled off? No, but I will now. Try it. No, that, I'm gonna do. Yeah, definitely. It's like yeah, I'm, glad, I, I'm like you. I'm not. I'm not a big fuzz fan. Um, but yeah, no, I'm definitely gonna try that. It's so cool. It's like I, I thought. Okay, well, how much difference can it make? It's almost mm-hmm. like it's on its own. Its own plateau. It's completely different. You know, on any guitar, whether it's a Les Paul two humbuckers or a Strat three three single coils or yeah. whatever, it just communicates with that. Uh, w- and I don't know if, if Hendri- I don't know if Hendrix was doing that. I have no idea. I never analyzed him. I mean, he obviously made that speak, but I don't know mm-hmm. if he was actually doing that or not. Uh, here's a good question, just popping in too. Griffin Guitar says, um, uh, "Do you use powered speakers for your Line Six Helix, or you plug straight into the PA? And do you have a monitor for your guitar?" So in your case, you're not using any monitors. You're going direct to front of house. Yeah. Are you going XLR right. dual XLR left and right out? We go dual XLR out, yeah, um, into the stage box, um, and then the the mixes at the back of the room. So yeah, it's, yeah, it's basically XLR straight into the PA. Perfect, and of course, then you have your in your monitors, which uh, give you your your stereo mix. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah, exactly. So we, we kind of hinted at uh, 2.8 a little bit, just came out the other day, I think, what, first day of NAM Thursday, I think it came out, it dropped. Um, you've updated everything, what's successful. Are there yeah. any features um, in 2.8 that have really kind of wowed you? Do you know, I'm going to be completely honest here, I did it this morning. <laughs> okay, oh, that's good. <laughs> um, I, yeah, I did it this morning, um, and I, do you know what, I was looking at the amp blocks, um, I've got it up on my uh, on my desktop here, and there's the there's the power cab, um, you know the the settings for the power cab on there, which I think is an amazing thing. Um, and I know that I don't, I've, I've heard good and bad about this, but I think it's really cool the percentage um, on the on expression the pedal. expression pedal. I love that. That's fantastic. Very well but said. But I haven't dived into yet so i've got time to do that no problem i I've, I've made a free uh, few presets just to show the new amplifiers i'm going to do that on a live stream coming up here very <clears> soon so all the new amps that are in there oh, right. uh, i haven't really dive uh, dove deep into any of the amplifiers and i'm a high gain guy anyway so like i i tend to obviously the rev generator really uh spoke to me and I, I like that one a lot i'll be doing some things with that but on on the geeky side and and i know eric klein at, at line six will love it when he hears people give a nod to this is the fact that it has the keyboard and hotkey control 
Uh, I, I yeah. love that to death. As a matter of fact, just before the show, I was going to do it and show people on the show here today. Uh, but I thought it's one of those things where let's just try this on another time. Not when I'm having guests on the show because train anything, you put more rocks on the train track and the train may go off the track, but I've got it set up. I can change camera angles. I can roll my credits. I can roll my outro credits. I can do uh, just chat things on the screen all with my feet. Now, at the same time, I would only do that just to show people because I don't want to be looking down at my feet, which is down, I mean, the, the Helix control is right down below here. But my better half here, she's like, no, you don't want to be doing that because obviously you want to be keeping eye contact with your guests and stuff like that. But just to go to show you that what it, whatever you can do with key commands, you can do now with, uh, with that. There's even presets in the templates where you can actually play a, a typical video game, up, down, left, right, run, jump, you know, all that kind of cool stuff. <laughs> not, not that we do it, but who knows, right? Well, I know for a fact, Toby, um, the guitar player in the guitar show, he loves all that sort of stuff. So I've got a feeling he'll be playing Pac-Man on his Helix. Yeah, that, I might even just try it just for fun. I might even try it. I know my, my son here, he likes this game on, online called Happy Wheels. And it's a very, it's actually kind of a violent game. But you got to get this bicycle and these things over the thing. Just try to get to the end of the end of the the line before you die. And it's the typical oh. up, down, left, right. So anything you can do that kind of, you know, typical video game movement you could do. So it'd be fun to try. Yeah. But the power cab remote Thanks. control is very cool. And I did have a preset made. Mm -hmm. I was going to show it on my demo last Friday there. Uh, but again, too, it's one of those things where I like to try to keep things in my comfort zone. And I could have had a train wreck. So I, I saved it for another day. But what it is, is in, in a preset I have, I'm using an acoustic guitar and I'm using a nice dirty guitar. And depending on the snapshot, mm. it would actually let me um, change, either go to FRFR on, uh, on, on the power cab, or when I go to my dirty preset, it would turn my cab lock off and use a certain modeling a speaker. And of course, the brown I would choose because I'm a Van Halen fan. They've, they've modeled the G12 sure. EVHs, right? So very, very, very cool. Uh, I mean, there's uh, there's so many other things that are cool about it, but those are the couple things that I really enjoyed. And something I will suggest to people as well, too, if you haven't updated yet, this is probably about the only thing I've heard, and it's very, they document the stuff very, very well. And if you make a mistake, mm -hmm. chances are, I'm, I'm not trying to point fingers because this could happen to any of us, if there's a mistake made, nine times out of ten, it's user error. Don't feel bad about it because us guys, especially a lot of us, don't like to read manuals or read instructions. We just like, okay, it's new, let's go get it. Make sure you've got the yeah. newest update of every, the newest Line 6 updater. Make sure you've got the newest HX edit. And even the other night when I was doing my demo, as much as I'm religious and I preach this all the time, I was about one version behind in PowerCab edit. And it goes to show you how, how intuitive that the staff at Line 6 are. Just looking at the software, not a version, just the icons and stuff, they could tell that the version of software I was using was slightly outdated. So have all the latest updates. But the biggest thing is where people are going to be um, frustrated if they don't read this note is that your global settings will be changed. So and, mm. um, did you know that as well too? Yeah, okay. I did find that actually. Good. Um, back it up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you, need, you need to put that as loud as you can back up. <laughs> yeah, and just yeah, and not only that, take a picture, literally, or just take a notepad and write it down because the only thing that I really, um, that I, I have changed in my global settings, there's probably a few other things too, maybe like my outputs being, you know, either line or mic, whatever. Uh, but the big things for me, how I like my snapshots, snaps and stomps. And there's another setting that I love, and this was a tip given to me by uh, Eric uh, Klein in the chat one time, one of my first Helix streams, is sometimes I would find if I had to delay a pedal, and I would go, let's say in one snapshot, it'd be around 250 milliseconds for a nice rhythm delay, and then I want to jump to a lead to go well over 400, <clears throat> and um, change the, uh, the, what is it, the, the tap tempo, I think, to transparent. I think that's the right thing. Right. So that's one of the things I love. So that way you don't get that zoop and a big kind of a ramping, you know, going from 250 up to 400. And that really, really helped as well, too. Yeah. But just take a picture I of your found global that settings. The trials. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, the, it, the, the trials on there. It's funny with, the, with this patch because um, I used the, the, it was the dotted on the, the Pink Floyd patch, the, you know, the dotted eighth. And then when I changed um, on the snapshot, it went whoop. <laughs> I know. I know. So, yeah. That's a, a good tip for sure. Um, let me see. And Larry Rockwell says, uh, the amps seem tweaked in a good way with 2.8. I'm hearing a lot of people saying that. Um, and, and the Line 6 staff can uh, correct me if I'm wrong. I don't really think that a lot of this happens a lot of times too when new firmware comes out. I don't think they're necessarily putting more icing on the cake of the, each preset. I think what it is, I think it's just we're so excited to have these new features that we think 
like a placebo that something's better about that particular amp. But if they do, if there's mojo and magic behind the scenes, I'll be happy to be wrong. Um, but I think it's just because we're so excited. I had this conversation with another fellow earlier before the show saying, I think this sounds better or whatever. Maybe it is. It's just, um, but I think it's more a fact that we're just getting more excited about the new updates. I could be wrong on that. Yeah. You, you yeah. never, you never yeah, know. I, I don't know. I mean, we'll have to see about that. I know. Yeah. I have to compare. Uh, and uh, Paolo says, um, uh, and let me see, what's the question? says, which guitars do you bring to a little venue? So if you're going to do a smaller show, I, I'm, not sure, I'm not sure how small or how big your shows go. I've seen some of the photos to see some massive stages. I don't know mm. how small your shows get. So if you're doing a smaller show, what do you bring out for guitars? Um, all of them. Oh, wow, cool. <laughs> we, yeah, no, we do. We, um, you know, I mean, people, what is, what's this? I suppose the smallest size venue we do is probably 250 to 300 um that's probably one of the really small venues that we do um and you know the way we see it is you know it's more or less the same ticket price whichever venue we go to uh, people are going to spend the you know hard-earned cash coming to see us then we're going to give them as much as we possibly can we're going to give them the same show regardless whether it's in a thousand seater venue or a you know a 300 seater venue so all of the guitars come it's a squeeze uh, sometimes it really is a squeeze, you know. And uh, we've got um, we've got uh, two or three um, guitar vaults that all the guitars live in. So I mean, they all have to come in anyway, so they'd all get used. You know? Well, good to know. Well, thank you for sharing that with us. And Joe Hervey says, uh, does the Helix offer suggestion help when you're creating a preset? So we don't really have like the Microsoft Clippy guy um, in Helix. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, what are you looking for? We don't really have that. But as Dave Iris Guitars is saying too, like it's it's really easy. And here's something that I've suggested a couple times on the show. And I, I need to practice what I preach because I haven't done this to its full extent yet. I've mentioned it and I'm, I've started and I'm going to continue to do this because there's so many amplifiers and effects and speaker combinations in Helix that probably many of us have not even, some of us may not have ever heard of or at least never tried. And a piece of advice I'm trying to give and follow is create a new preset drop in a speaker cabinet and just something to get you started for us rock guys and girls maybe a 412 you know 20 watt speakers whatever and put in your first amp block and just strum if you want maybe some some comfort uh tone pop on a reverb or something just to give you some comfort tone and then play a couple chords whatever and then change that amp block to the next amp in line start at start at the very yeah. top who what or whatever it is i don't even know what the top of the one is and just work your way down and then just like graphic designers, a lot of times we're working, uh, we're making a logo or something. Oh, I like that font. I'm going to write that one down. I'll come back to it after. Try next font. Yeah. Eventually, you've got a nice little list now. Maybe if you're the graphic designer, you've got 12 fonts out of 500 that you like. Now in Helix, you've got 15 amplifiers that you would have never thought you have ever seen in your life or heard. You're like, wow, wow. And you remember those for a rainy day when you want to create like a bluesy patch or a fuzzy patch. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, it will get you out of your comfort zone. And again, I need to follow my own words. I've, I've started. I've gone down the list. I'm like, wow, that's cool. That's cool. Like the Angle Meteor amp. That came from two people, mm. from Carlo, one of our friends here in the chat, and from Jen Majura when she was on the show. Uh, that's what she endorses, that amplifier. And I really enjoyed it. And I probably never in a million years would have played through that amplifier. It just wasn't my thing, even though it is a high-gain amp. So getting out of that comfort zone can be a real blessing. Mm. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Yeah, definitely. It's, uh, I mean, if you... If you're used to having an amplifier on stage and you suddenly go in into this world, if you like, uh, drop in an amp that um, you, you're kind of familiar with, like uh, for example the, um, the the AC15 model. Um, I'm just looking. I can't remember what they. What is it? What is it called on here? The um, oh, I can't find. Oh, the Essex fifteen. Yes, yeah, Essex thirty. Uh, Essex, yeah, yeah. That's it. And and if you if you just drop the um, amp plus cab in there, mm -hmm. it's it's going to have, you know, it's I think it's got the bluebell speaker in there, hasn't it? Mm -hmm. what yep. they call it. So it's in, it's instant. They got the cab, so you kind of don't have to go chain looking for cabs and amps. You're right. You know, yeah. You exactly. Can, Even more simple. You, you, yeah. Yeah. You just drop the amp that you're familiar with in there, and and you will kind of it, it will feel it will feel like that. You know, definitely. That's right. I mean, especially if you've got the power cab as well, you know. What was funny is when, when they announced the new amps that were coming uh, in 2.8, 
I went to go watch some demos, especially the the Fender amps and the Maticos and things like that. Um, I watched YouTube demos of the people playing these real amplifiers, like like guitar centers or you know some of these vintage shops and things like that. And uh, I was like, "Holy cow! Does that ever sound like it?" Because some of these amps I've never played, I've never played in a million years. Like the real amplifiers, and watching some of these talented uh, guitar players play through those amplifiers and just hitting a couple mm. chords on on my end, I was like, "That sounds like the amp!" Like literally, yeah, it's pretty yeah. good. Yeah, very very Absolutely. cool. Absolutely. And another thing with that as well is you, you might get you you got your real purists out there. They go, "Yeah, you know, it, you, you, you turn the valve amp on and you can smell it and all, all this type of thing." I mean, but that's line six's next thing, you know, smell that comes up from it. I don't know, but <laughs> crazy there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you know. The, they got the whole vibe of it and and i would say well that's great you know yeah you've got all that but you mic that amp up you get a helix you know and, and i have done this um, at yamaha hq stick them through a pa you know you are really good if you've got the amp away you're really going to struggle to define which which is which you know? i bet i bet take the, noise, take the noise gate off though <laughs> that's right we gotta keep it realistic here in Canada, we have this uh, this uh, candle product called Sensi. I'm not sure if it's available worldwide, but I'm sure this concept is available worldwide. It's just a scented yeah. candle. You stick it in your burners, and it, it warms up, and it smells like an apple in your house or whatever. So maybe Line 6 could uh, strike a deal with some of these people, and <laughs> with your Helix purchase, you get new tube smell, and it's a little, put, stick it in your little burner, <laughs> and as you're rocking out with Helix, you've got the new tube burning you know, off to the side. But I know it's a joke, of course. But I even made a joke of doing the uh, what do you do with the yeah, new Helix yeah. when I unboxed that when I even did. Yeah, it has a new Helix smell and it has a nice, it has a smell. <laughs> I'll just say that. I love it. Uh, here's a good point here as we wrap up. I've got to see if I can find this one again too. This was from Larry. He says, there will not be enough days in my life to get all the things I want to do with Helix. And that's the thing. It may scare you to think oh, I, there's so much I want to do with it, but make it a, make it simple to start with. Just find mm-hmm. one tone and play with that. And then what you're going to find is, is you're going to be looking back and you're going to be playing guitar solid for a week and realize you haven't done anything other than play guitar solid for a week. That's great. You can, there's, it'll always be there waiting for you to take to the next level, but create something yeah. simple and just start playing. Absolutely. And, and as well, if you use the, um, if you use the desktop rather than just programming it actually on the unit, yep. um, you, you know, you, you can actually look at the amplifiers on there. I'm looking at it now, you know, there's a, there's a little picture of a, a Fawn AC30. There's a little picture of, you, you know, the, um, a Fender Twin, you know, so that, that's a great thing as well. And, and the pedals are the same. So again, if you're familiar with a certain pedal, a valve driver, or a um, you know the SD one, anything like that, you can actually go on there. You can see a picture of it, and then you can straight away people will go, "Oh, right, yeah, it's that." And, and you know, you are kind of halfway there, really, because I mean, people do hear things with their eyes. I, I know they I do. do. They do. You want that's a great. This is a good way to end the segment because I, that has never been more true. I created a preset where I had uh, in the preset I had an IR. And I also had a stock cab that I would A-B between. And I purchased the Celestian um, G12 EVHs. Now they've modeled those ones in power cab. And um, and my eyes, looking at the thing, so I'd step on, on a toggle, it would turn on IR. Step on it again, it would turn on the stock cab. Looking at HX Edit, as I'm playing, I'm like, okay, I see the stock, or the IR is on, I'm thinking, okay, this is great, I love it. I turned it on to the stock cab. No, I think I like the IR. So I did one of these things where I looked away from the screen, and I come back, and I'm playing, I stepped on the toggle again. I'm like, oh yeah, yeah, that's that's sweet. I looked back at the screen and I was on stock cab. My eyes tricked <laughs> my eyes tricked my ears. Yeah. Your ears, yeah. your, uh, your eyes can lie. Your ears will not lie. And that's where I was like, okay, so, this is great because now I can realistically and honestly say to people that you can bring your Helix home from the store. And I don't discourage people buying IRs. I did. I was a customer. I bought them. And there's free ones out there too. But you don't have to. You can use what's mm. stock and have wonderful tone. Exactly. Yeah, I think I think I've got IRs on mine. I'm I'm pretty sure I don't use them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, pretty sure then. And then now, of course, with the power cabs, and even with power cab one twelve, with the uh, one twelve plus with the new firmware update, there's the, all the models now that we have with two twelve. So I mean, if you want to use IRs, or you want your speaker modeling, save yourself some DSP on your device, whether it be Stomp or or Helix, and mm. use what's built into the power mm. cab. So mm. yeah, get yourself one of those soon, and then let me know what you think of them. Yeah, yeah, definitely. There's, those power cabs are amazing things. Now the 212s come out, then, uh, yeah, 
definitely. It would be a great addition to the show. <laughs> one, one thing that I do, I'll share this as a closing note, and this is just what this is. I, I describe it as a tone that just reaches out and gives you a hug. I, uh, because Helix is so versatile for routing, I mean, there's a million ways you could do this. I'm doing it as simplistically as this. I'm running left and right XLR out to PowerCap 212+. Plus. Now, technically, I am still running stereo. Um, I could change it to mono, and I might do that just, just to make it even more realistic. And then L6 Link out, and what's really smart about L6 Link, depending on which device you plug in and turn on first, that will become your left. So I'm running L6 Link out of rack to PowerCap 1. Uh, L6 okay. link out of that cab to number two. So what essentially now is if I've created a wet, dry, wet rig in a path, I um, I like to take my old favorite effects, wah pedal, phaser, flanger, chorus, maybe a tremolo, um, maybe a pitch, um, and I will send that to uh, the dry, the 212 dead center, and then a nice reverb, a plate reverb, and some ambient delay mm. Uh, left and right and holy crap is it a beautiful tone and it's all by running two different sets of outputs from helix very very simple and you don't have to necessarily have all the same rig that i have you could have two solid state amplifiers on left and right side and a tube amp in the middle or you mm-hmm. know you, the, you could be three different independent amplifiers they're not going to be exactly the same but if you, as long as you get your volumes kind of consistent along those three amplifiers you got it it sounds great yeah i'd like to hear that it's really cool definitely is it- that, that's that's the thing you see. I mean, the, the, this the Helix integrates with anything you want, you know. So it's it really is limitless, isn't it? It is. It is. Well, listen, we are right at the four thirty uh, mark here, right on the half hour. I want to thank you so very, very much for giving us ninety minutes of your time today, and also for the preset. Uh, I want to encourage everyone to take a look at the links that were shared in the live chat today, as well as down in the description. You're definitely in for a treat to check out uh, the story of Guitar Heroes. And I'm really, really very happy that Jennifer Batten sent me a message one day and said, Eric, here's a guest you need to check out because it opened up my eyes to uh, uh, a lot of entertainment. So thank you so very much, Phil. Oh, I'd like to say a personal thank you to Jennifer as well for putting me in touch with you. So, yeah, thank you, Jennifer. And thanks to yourself for having me on. Really appreciate it. (laughs) <laughs> that's, that's very cool I appreciate that very much so anyways let's, don't go away I'm going to say goodbye to you off the air and uh, I want to thank everyone for tuning in we'll be back we'll be making a post on our Facebook group All Things Line 6 Helix which is down below or on the Helix Hour on Facebook letting you know when Billy Sheehan's coming on it's either next Sunday or the final one or the, the Sunday after that'll be our final show for season 3 we'll probably only be off for a week or two and then get back for season 4 I can't believe it's 4 seasons already but very excited about it and it's all because of you guys and girls tuning in uh, every Sunday It's it's been a pleasure okay everyone have a fantastic evening and Phil say goodbye to you off the air and until next time cheers hey you're still here Eric Jr. here reminding you to check out our full lineup of quality merch available right now in the Broadstash boutique quality products and fast shipping visit broadstash.com today Thank you for watching the Helix Hour. We hope you enjoyed today's presentation. An extra special thank you to the staff at Line 6 for their continued support. If you've not yet subscribed, please do so right now and feel free to share our content with your friends. See you next time on the Helix Hour.